Hello my wonderful students. Welcome back to your science class. So my dear students as we have completed our A part and B part of our chapter number 7 that is living and non-living. So today students we will complete our C part and D part in this video. So let's start. Let's start. I hope student each one of you have open page number 78. So students today we will do our C part and our D part right. So let's start our C part. What is question number one says why do animals move around? So why do animals move around students? So animals move around in search of food, shelter and to escape from predators or enemies right. Students watch the video properly and Pause the video and write the answer in your science notebooks, right? Neatly. I want your work neat. Okay? So, question number two. Give an example of movement in plants. You have to give example of movement. How plants move, right? So, we have even watched in a video sunflower move by saying sun. See? So, example of movement in plants is a sunflower turns its faces towards the sun due to phototropism right question number three question three says that what are cells are all living things made up of cells now they are asking define cell and they also ask that okay, does all the living organisms are made up of cells so the answer is cells are the fundamental units of a living organisms and yes all living things are made up of cell student in addition some living organisms are just single cell Single cell organisms are known as unicellular organisms, right? Question number four. This says that there is some growth in unicellular organism. How do they grow? So now they say that the unicellular organisms grow, right? And they also asked you that how does they grow? So the answer is unicellular organisms show some growth by the increase in the size of the single cell that constitute the organisms, right? Question number five. Give an example of a stimulus and a response. Now they are asking you that you have to give an example of a stimulus and a response by giving an example, right? So example of a stimulus and a response is if you accidentally touch a hot object, right? If you accidentally touch a hot object, what happens, student? You automatically withdraw your hand. Yes, obviously, if we touch any hot object, we automatically withdraw our hand, right? So the heat of the hot object is the stimulus, student heat of the hot object is the stimulus and the withdrawing of your hand is the response to the stimulus right so question number six how, how are autotrophs different from heterotrophs i know now i am 100 percent sure that all of you must know the meaning of autotrophs and heterotrophs right so now you have to differentiate that means you have to make a line in between mark a line in between and you have to differentiate between so autotrophs are those students that prepare their own food by the process of photosynthesis right, like green plants and heterotrophs are those that depend upon other organisms for food example animals right question number seven question seven says that all living things take in oxygen right what function do does oxygen perform in the body now this is very much clear that all we all living things take oxygen now what is the function of oxygen in our body so the answer is the oxygen taken in the living things during breathing is combined with the food right that is digested by them to produce energy it helps us to produce energy right so now the question number eight is name three waste products that we excrete now you have to tell the three waste products that we excrete first is our what first is sweat Sec second is sweat third is the exhaled air right sweat urine exhaled air so that with this we have completed our c part now we move further to our d part d part is long answer question students so question number one explain with an example what is meant by living things respond to stimuli now you have to explain this statement that by giving an example that living things respond to stimuli as we have taken the uh, example of a hot object when we touch the hot object we withdraw our hand so by this you also have to give an example of resp responding to stimuli right so the answer is living things respond to change in their environment for example if you touch the leaf 
there is one leaf that is known as mimosa touch me not plant so when you touch that the leaves droops drop right in this case the plant is responding to the stimulus of touch by drooping its leaves right question number 2 how do living things grow now you have to tell how does living things grow student and they also asked you that some non living things also grow does some non living things also grow and how is their growth different from the growth of living things so the answer is living things grow by the division of cells student and unicellular organisms such as amoeba grow by increase in the size of the single cell that makes up the organism right so non living things grow by addition of material from outside for example a pile of sand will grow if more sand is added to it a pile of sand will grow if more sand is added to it like this it will grow and grow right question number 3 list three ways in which living things reproduce giving one example of each now you have to give three ways in which the living things reproduce by giving an example so the answer is first some living things produce buds some produce buds student which grow into new organism for example potatoes produce buds right known as eyes which grow into new potatoes plant potato plant right second is mammals such as humans we give birth to Yeah, our young ones. So we give birth to directly our young ones, right? Some snakes. Third is some snakes, birds, and crocodiles lay eggs, and the young ones hatch from the eggs, right? Question number four. Now, question four says that list four different ways in which organism carry out exchange of gases for respiration, with one example of each. So. now if we talk about all living organisms exchange exchange gases with the environment we know that so this mean the means are as follows fishes respire using fish respire using their gills earthworms use their skin for respiration insects such as cockroaches breathe through several tracheal tubes in their body humans and many other animals such as cows goats etc respire through external nostrils which supply air to the lungs so these are the four examples student Moving further, question number five. What does question five says? Now you have to explain phototropism and geotropism in plants, student. Are there any similar example in the plants world also? Now they have I've asked you to explain the phototropism process and the geotropism process by giving an example, right? In animals too. So if plants is potted near a window, as we have seen the example of a sunflower. So in the same way, if we pot up, if we uh, plant. if you pot a plant near a window student its stem will bend towards the light as it grows right the growth of the plant towards light is known as phototropism in the same way the roots of plants grow towards the earth and the stem grows in the opposite right in the opposite direction so this is an example of geotropism so in animals cockroaches and earthworms show negative phototropism So, if I give you an example of cockroaches, student, at your home, in uh, kitchens or in some other places, there are cockroaches, right? So, you must have seen that cockroaches never come in light. At night, they used to come, right? When we switch off, switch off the lights, cockroaches come at that time. Why? Because they have a negative, uh, for they have a negative phototropism. They move away from the light, student. Right? As they move away from the light, in the same way, paramesh, paramecium. swims in the opposite direction of the earth's gravity and shows a negative geotropism right so question number 6 our last question what does question 6 says students explain giving examples what do you mean by species now you have to give example of species and define what do you mean by species so each type of living organism has many individuals which are broadly similar to each other individuals may differ slightly but the behavior habits or appearance is quite similar right such a group constitutes species member of a species inhabit the same environment eat the same kind of food and reproduce among themselves for example all pigs are species humans form species of trees are species of trees right so with this we have completed our d part also student so with this we have completed our whole chapter of living and non living i hope everyone understood so I, now i want that each one of you please write the answers in your science notebook neatly students i hope student each one of you have written your answers correctly so now click the pictures and send it to me so till then take care stay safe and stay healthy thank you students